Eight years later, the mission team is still studying the data from the flyby, which is yielding new and exciting discoveries and altering our perspective of the solar system. Is there really a hidden ocean of liquid water beneath Pluto's surface? What caused icy dunes across the planet's terrain? These are just a few of the fascinating things about the New Horizons mission. The mission has been one of the toughest space missions in human history. The probe reached Pluto and captured a view of the rock on the outskirts of our solar system that no one has ever seen before at such a close distance. Before the New Horizons Pro was launched on January 19, 2006, the primary goal of the mission was to study Pluto, once dubbed the most distant planet of the solar system. Back then, it wasn't possible to get a close-up look at Pluto, and scientists were really interested in seeing what the surface of the dwarf planet looked like. Because Pluto is so far away from Earth, the mission team had to come up with clever tricks to speed up the probe's journey because otherwise it would take the probe a really long time to get there. After launch from Earth, in just under 9 hours, the New Horizons probe passed the Moon's orbit while approaching the solar system's largest planet, Jupiter. The spacecraft took pictures of the gas giant and its moons on Io. The probe caught the Taser volcano in action, capturing a volcanic eruption that reached 200m into space in 2007. The probe swung within 1.4 million miles of Jupiter and got a big gravity assist from the gas giant. This little maneuver massively reduced its time of arrival at Pluto from 14 to just 9 years, although an 8-year voyage was still ahead to make sure the probe's electronics stayed in good shape. At one point, when New Horizons was approximately 3 billion miles from Earth, scientists placed the spacecraft into hibernation mode. The mission team encountered technical challenges because the 1,000-pound probe wasn't receiving enough sunlight to generate enough power, which caused communication issues. The situation worsened the further the spacecraft traveled, and by the time New Horizons probe approached the dwarf planet, its signal would take about four and a half hours to reach our planet. Approximately four months before approaching Pluto, the spacecraft's cameras started revealing distinct features of the dwarf planet. From that moment on, the level of detail in New Horizons images increased every music week. Another challenge during the mission was the discovery of Kerberos and the two new moons orbiting the dwarf planet. This meant there could be a lot more space rocks and dust around Pluto than previously thought. Researchers had to figure out a way to avoid any potential problems. If there was more debris near Pluto, the mission team had two backup options, either use the antenna acting as a shield against the incoming particles or approach the dwarf planet closer than initially planned, where there might be less debris. Ten days before the spacecraft's nearest approach, something unexpected happened. The New Horizons probe entered safe mode, and astronomers lost contact with the spacecraft. Luckily, it was just an overload on the computer, a problem with the spacecraft's command sequence. The team quickly regained control of the probe and decided to take a safety measure. Retrieve a special set of data in case something goes wrong after the spacecraft turns away from Earth for its closest encounter with Pluto. The fail-safe batch of data contained images that, had a terrible disaster occurred and safety precautions not been taken, humanity would have missed forever. This compilation of images shows the dwarf planet from various angles and all of Pluto's moonchan in vibrant colors. On July 15, 2015, the probe's messages reached the Mission Operations Base, notifying astronomers that 13 hours earlier, New Horizons successfully passed above the surface of Pluto at an altitude of 4,800 m, collecting scientific data on the satellites and atmosphere of the dwarf planet, but recovering that data wasn't simple. Check this out if you believe your internet provider's download speeds are sluggish. The anticipated 6.25 gigabytes took an astounding 15 months to download. The enormous distance between New Horizons and Earth meant that the probe could only send between 1 and 2 kilobits of data per second, but even so, the wait was worthwhile because it allowed humanity to see Pluto's mountainous terrain up close for the first time, with some peaks rising as high as 11,000 feet and one made of ice rather than rock. Researchers believe that the icy mountain range is only a hundred million years old, suggesting that it may be a sign of recent geological activity. Here is another up-close photo of the surface of Chan that shows evidence of past landslides. Additionally, New Horizons has taken multiple stunning images of the haze layers surrounding Pluto's atmosphere, 
which reach up to 125 million miles above the surface of the celestial body. The haze forms when sunlight breaks down methane gas particles in Pluto's atmosphere. From there, methane forms more complex gases like ethylene and acetylene, which the probe previously detected in the air of the dwarf planet. These gases fall to the colder regions of the atmosphere and transform into ice particles that appear as haze layers. Researchers can learn a great deal about Pluto's surface from this alien atmosphere. The sunlight converts the haze there into tholins, or dark hydrocarbons, which give the surface a reddish hue in some areas. The largest of these is a white, heart-shaped area that is home to a 600-meter nitrogen glacier known as Sputnik Plota. Because of its immense size, the glacier is unlike any other in the solar system. Although some scientists believe it to be an impact crater with a lot of strange activity occurring there, astronomers believe it to be a very recent and unexplained structure on Pluto's surface. The fact that ice on Pluto transforms into gas is one such peculiarity. The property of ice known as sublimation means that if you leave it in a freezer for a long time, it will eventually disappear. This occurs when ice slowly changes from a solid to a liquid state, skipping the liquid in between stages because the right temperature prevents it from melting. The surface region of Sputnik and Pluto is covered in geometric shapes made of nitrogen ice, which has long baffled scientists. One possible explanation is that the icy surface of Pluto experiences the same effect, but the ice deposits there aren't consistent throughout the surface. When the ice on the dwarf planet shrinks, it creates strange polygon patterns scattered around the Sputnik plan that appear icy. On Pluto, June sublimation of ice also produces ridges or blades of ice, which scientists refer to as penitents. However, unlike the several meter-high ice pillars that form on Earth, these penitents on Pluto can grow to be as large as skyscrapers, extending hundreds of feet high. On Pluto, methane freezes and evaporates during warmer periods, and this process continues for millions of years. Ice morphs, assuming the appearance of blades. The location of Sputnik Point remains a mystery. According to scientific models, this is how the largest glacier happened to be located directly opposite of Chang. One theory is that the hidden mass beneath Sputnik Planeta is an ocean, which isn't an ocean. Scientists believe the region could have moved vast distances across Pluto's surface in the past, they call the process behind this movement a polar wonder. If scientists are correct, Sputnik Planeta might be responsible for the rotation of the entire dwarf planet. The famous heart-shaped region on Pluto experiences a positive gravitational anomaly gravity that is unique to its terrain, and as a result, it significantly affects the dwarf planet's rotation. It is theoretically possible that life could even evolve on such a far-off cold rock on Earth, as evidenced by data from the New Horizons spacecraft showing that both Pluto and Chan are complex celestial bodies with signs of recent geologic and tectonic activity that indicate a past subsurface ocean on Chiron and a possibility of one existing on the dwarf planet even today. Seismometers on the Moon track waves generated by events like earthquakes. We may learn about the composition and structure of various materials by observing the speed at which these waves pass through them. The density of the celestial object allows astronomers to speculate about the composition of its layers, which allows them to build models based on the most likely materials, such as rock and ice. In one of these models, scientists proposed that Pluto's surface contains a hot, gooey asphalt layer that was originally organic matter like carbon, but under extreme pressure and temperature, it can turn into a thick tar-like substance. This process is similar to how ultrasound medical examinations use sound waves to create images of the inside of human bodies. Depending on the circumstances within Pluto and its chemistry, if Pluto had any of the organic stuff found in its crust, it may have developed over time into an interior organic layer that is 60 meters thick. Kuiper objects are often rich in organic materials. The layer may contain liquid asphalt or solid carbon such as graphite, and it may be combined with a liquid subsurface ocean, but how could a planet billions of miles from the sun manage to prevent the water from freezing for so long? Billions of years ago, dust, rock, and ice slowly clumped together to form Pluto and other solar system objects. When the dwarf planet grew large enough, the heat left from its formation could melt portions of the ice, which comprise Pluto. This theory works well if we assume a hot beginning, but how can we be certain that Pluto was initially hot or cold? Liquid water eventually turned solid, creating cracks along its surface. 
This occurs because water expands when it freezes. Something similar happened on Pluto, just much slower. Frozen water is also less dense, which is why ice can float in liquid water. If Pluto had a hot formation it should have clear signs of this its surf would have expanded and cracked as it slowly cooled and if the dwarf planet started out cold astronomers should be able to see signs of the opposite compression in Pluto's past the New Horizons has shown scientists craters on Pluto that are nearly as old as our solar system none of which are compressed in one study. Where researchers theorize there's an ocean below Sputnik Pleta they suggested it could be filled with large Amounts of ammonia if that was found to be true the subsurface ocean wouldn't be like liquid water but rather syrupy ammonia within it would be colorless and have a intense suffocating odor but what's fascinating is that this chemical compound of nitrogen and hydrogen is one of the ingredients for life and not just that when ammonia comes in contact with water it causes a chemical reaction and the molecules act. As antifreeze keeping that water warmer when it would have been otherwise if other. Dwarf planets and large icy moons in our solar system began their journey like Pluto Earth might not be the sole celestial body harboring a liquid ocean and potential life within our solar system could be a vast reservoir of water both its inner and outer parts with a variety of aquatic environments in the scientific community there's an idea that the evolution of life might be more favorable in a subsurface ocean than on the surface of a celestial body even if separated by billions of miles. From the sun subsurface oceans could be warmed by geological processes and life within them would be shielded from asteroid impacts and deadly radiation whether something like this is possible or not remains to be discovered in the future during the probe's retreat from the dwarf planet it made its final high resolution images of Pluto and its memeizing haze overall the spacecraft has made more than 200 scientific observations of the Pluto system including its five moons and right now new. Horizons is still wandering the Kyer belt after studying a binary trans-Neptunian object Araco for decades to come no other probe will discover this realm of icy celestial bodies and who knows perhaps it can surprise us with another mysterious finding in the near future as technologies evolve so does our understanding of the cosmic neighborhood do you believe we'll find that the solar system is full of liquid water and potential. For life let us know what you think in the comments below we. Read them all stay tuned here for more thrilling space discoveries and thanks for watching.